In this video, I'm going to recommend some textbooks for the students of food science and technology. Welcome back to the channel. This is Ari Birshad and you are watching Food Tech Simplified where I make simple and easy to understand lectures, videos and tutorials for the students of food science and technology. So if you want to level up your profile and simplify your studies then make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon as well so that you don't miss the new videos when they come out. So let's talk about some of the textbooks that every student uh, and irrespective of the degree program like whether it is BSc program or BTech program, MSc or MTech program, B vocational or M vocational as well. So I think uh, these are the standard textbooks that every food science and technology student needs to go through at least once. The first book, this is Food Science by Norman Water. I made a review when I used to be, <laughs> when I used to be, uh, what should I say, a cringy YouTuber. So. This book, this standard textbook, uh, Food Science by Norman Porter, this is known as the Bible of food technology because uh, this is one of the oldest textbooks as well. I actually have a video on that. I will link that down in the description. I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the contents and what you can expect as a student from this book. So first of all, there are some characteristics of the food industry, although I haven't read that chapter. And there are some properties of the food products like you are going to read about carbohydrates, fats, proteins, lipids, minerals, vitamins. Uh, you are going to understand some of the unit operations like if you want to get the gist, uh, get the basics of unit operations, this is a good book to, uh, to start. There are some quality factors and, uh, and one of the most important chapter or should I say a group of chapters is food preservation. Food deterioration and its control is one of the important chapter. And then there comes, there are uh, subcategories, I think, because in Food Facts and Principles by Shakuntala Mane, the, these are the chapters, uh, these chapters are also available in that book. And uh, although there, there is a very slight difference, so in this book, uh, what they have done, they have subdivided the chapters of food preservation into heat preservation, cold preservation, and so on. So there's heat preservation, cold preservation, food dehydration and concentration, there's irradiation, uh, there's fermentation. This is also a good chapter from ICR net perspective and gate perspective. There's a chapter on milk and milk powders. I haven't personally read that chapter, but uh, because for me, I refer Sukumar Day's outlines of dairy technology for milk and milk products. I'm going to also talk about that in a bit. Uh, there's a chapter on meat, poultry and eggs and I and I was introduced to meat technology, meat, poultry and eggs uh, from this book. I made notes from this book as well. There's a chapter on seafoods. Uh, there's a chapter on fats, oils and related products. Uh, there's also a chapter on cereal grains. Now, uh, in BTEC, I think in third year or maybe in fourth year, they are going to tackle with, they are going to uh, they will have to tackle with cereal processing, cereal and grains processing. So this is a good chapter to start. There's a chapter on vegetables and fruits. And I think if you are looking to understand fruits and vegetables, I would rather recommend Shakuntala Mani's book. But this is also a good book for uh, vegetables and fruits. There's a chapter on beverages, uh, confectionery, food packaging. And then there are some chapters I haven't gone through. There's chapter number 23, that is food safety, risk and hazards. It's, it's a very good chapter if you want to understand what is food safety, what is HACCP principle, what is risk analysis. I think this is a very good chapter to understand the differences uh, between hazards and, and uh, risk and food safety and so on. There are two more chapters, chapter 24 and 25 on government regulations of food and nutrition labeling and then hunger, technology and world food needs. I haven't gone through these and uh, Really, I haven't gone through the entire book, but I have read most of the chapters. I have made my own notes uh, from most of the chapters of this book. And th this was the book that I think, I, this was the first book that I purchased as a student when I was in BTEC in first year, I think. And I'm still referring uh, to this book uh, every now and then. So I think this is a good, books to, uh, good book to start. 
the language the english language can be a little tricky for most of the students because we are not uh, native english speakers but i think this is a very powerful book this is a very powerful book if you are just if you just want to start from the basics and uh, most of the students from msc who don't have a background of food science and they uh, want to go for msc in food science i recommend this book for them the second book on the list is food facts and principles by shakuntala mani and uh, this is also a very good book and a lot of students buy this book because of the ease of language most of the chapters in this book are very similar to norman potter's food science and uh, i think one of the primary reason students buy this book is ease of language they, it is very easy to understand and it's very easy and simple to make notes from this book if you are specifically trying to understand and get the gist of it also uh, there are specific chapters on carbohydrates lipids proteins vitamins minerals so in case you want to go for food chemistry part you are trying to understand food chemistry this is a very good book to uh, get the gist of food chemistry and also get into depth of food chemistry because food chemistry is essentially about carbohydrates proteins fats minerals vitamins and proteins uh, water and pigments and colors and flavor as well sometimes enzymes uh, also so the first 10 chapters are dedicated to food chemistry although they haven't specifically pointed out that this is food chemistry th this comes under food chemistry uh, but just for your knowledge apart from that no i think they have mentioned i yeah part 1 is food chemistry so i have made a specific uh, review on this book and i will link that down uh, as well in the description uh, but just to give you a brief there's a unit or there's a part on food and food products which includes beverages again beverages was also in uh, food science by norman potter it has a chapter on fruits vegetables now it has a chapter on cereals cereal products pulses nuts oils and fats and foods spices i think spices was not available in food science by norman potter uh, it has a chapter on milk and milk products however i never uh, got to read milk and milk products from this book because i always go back to sukumar de's outlines of dairy te uh, technology for milk and milk products there is a chapter on x specific chapter on meat poultry uh, seafoods sugar and confectionery and then there is part 3 where they have talked about preservation and processing so there is a chapter on cooking of foods there is a chapter on food quality another important chapter is food additives chapter number 29 this is very important i'm not sure if you will be able to see the contents of this book but this is a very important chapter uh, from the point of view of gate exam and icer exam so this is a very good chapter and i think food additives this is not available in food <clears throat> food science by norman potter so that's why uh, you can see i bought food science by norman potter and i i also bought this one in my second year of btech so and then there is one of the most important chapter that is chapter number 30 food preservation and processing now this is also available in food science by norman potter and this is also available in this book so these are kind of similar but there are very subtle differences and then finally uh, the chapter 31 is nutrition health and food con consciousness i never got to read this one strange how strange <laughs> anyway so this is a good book uh, for beginners as well and Uh, if you are really scared of english if you uh, or if you just purchased food science by norman potter for some reason and you are trying to decrypt the language of food science by norman potter so i think this is also a good book to start because this is going to this is going to be a good investment i think the third book on the list is food microbiology by william frazier now i'm not sure if you can see the scruff marks on this because the light is coming out coming on this book and but you can definitely see the film coming out and why am i showing you the film that is coming out because i'm a very brilliant student <laughs> apart from being a brilliant student i think uh, why i just showed you the film coming out the the reason is that i purchased this way back in i think 2015 and i have been using this so it's been quite a long time since i purchased this and i'm still using it i'm showing you the film and the scruff marks for a purpose that this is a good investment i made an investment about 400 or 500 rupees and i'm still using it it's it's a long term investment i think everyone every student needs to buy this one specifically for microbiology so let me just give you a brief overview part 1 food and microorganisms so 
Yeah, this is this is very important from na uh, net and gate perspective because there are many chapters. I'm not going to list all the chapters, but uh, there are some important concepts like 12D concept, thermal dead time. There's a chapter on food as substrate for microorganisms, uh, how foods are contaminated, preservation techniques using high temperature, using low temperatures, preservation by drying. Now. Now you may think that preservation was also present in food science and food facts and principles by Mani. But in this book, uh, they have talked about the preservation and processing techniques from the point of view of microorganisms and microbiology and pathogens. So in food science and food technology, microbiology is one of the important thing or concept because essentially we have to make the food safe. The microorganisms are present everywhere and we have to make sure that our food is safe and food is devoid of such microorganisms who can harm the consumers or who can be fatal for the consumers. So that is why it's important to understand food microbiology because uh, although some of the microorganisms are very harmful for us, but there are certain microorganisms which we utilize, which we consume in our food as well. So that's a very interesting concept. That's a very interesting concept to know about if you are just a beginner and not just a beginner, but you are trying to ace some of the examinations like ICR ex exam and gate exam as well. So there's a chapter on preservation by radiation. Now there are some specific food products that they have talked about. The spoilage of uh, specific uh, food products like cereals and cereal products. They have talked about sugar. They have talked about spoilage of vegetables and fruit. Uh, they have talked about spoilage of meat, spoilage of fish, spoilage of eggs, poultry, milk, milk products and so on. They have also talked about food fermentations. Uh, again, another important chapter. They have talked about some bacterial poisoning, infection, intoxication. And they have talked about uh, outbreaks as well. So there are many outbreaks. There have been many outbreaks which they have talked about. One thing that I really like about uh, this textbook is that after every chapter, there are somewhere between five to 10 questions, like multiple choice questions. I'm not sure if you can see this. Can you see this? I think these are some of the important things that every book should have. I'm not, I'm not really sure why Shaguntla Mane is a food science, uh, food facts and principles and non-Potter's food science doesn't have these features, but this book has these features. They have review questions, they have multiple choice questions. And I think multiple choice questions, the more you practice multiple choice questions, the better it is for ICR, net exam, ICR, SRF, JRF, CFTRI or GATE exam. So yeah, this is a good book for food microbiology. I'm talking about the fifth edition. I think the fifth edition will do you good. The fourth book on the list, is it fourth? Yeah, it's fourth. It's the fourth book on the list is Outlines of Dairy Technology by Sukumar Dey. This is a very standard textbook for all the dairy technologists, for all the dairy scientists and, uh, and every food technologist, obviously. What were you thinking? So. Uh, there are some chapters on market milk, special milks, special milks like sterilized milk, homogenized milk. These are the subtopics under the, ch uh, under the chapter. Uh, there's a chapter on cream, there's a chapter on butter, there's a chapter on ice cream. I'm feeling so hungry right now. <laughs> there's a chapter on cheese, there's a chapter on condensed milk, dried milks, milk products. And Indian dairy products, I'm, I'm really amazed because usually in the textbooks, no one talks about Indian dairy products, but in this uh, textbook, they have talked about Khoya, they have talked about Kheer. If I keep reading the contents, I have, I'm sure that I'm going to be very hungry. So all your needs uh, relative to milk, milk products, cheese, butter, any product that is associated with milk, this is a good book to start. However, this is a, an old textbook and uh, if you are trying to understand some of the laws and regulations related with milk and milk products, I think this book is outdated for that, for the laws and regulations. So what you, what you can do, you can purchase this book specifically to understand the concepts of milk, milk products and different kind of products associated with milk. But if you are trying to understand the regulations and the specific value, like the what is the value of fat in uh, full cream milk, what is the value of solid not fat SNF in toned milk, if you are trying to understand these values, I think it would be much better if you head over to fssi.gov.in and just download the brochures or download the laws and regulations specifically for milk and milk products because 
FSSI is updating it from time to time. But I think this is a very good book if you are trying to understand the science behind uh, milk and milk products. If you are trying to understand the constituents of milk and milk products. So this is a very good book. I'm still referring to this every now and then. And I think this was a very good investment. I bought this in second year as well because we had to study dairy technology in the second year of BTEC. So if you had the budget for just one book and like let's say if you had just 500 rupees for dairy technology or dairy science, I think you should invest your 500 rupees on this book for dairy science and technology, not just uh, to understand the concepts of dairy science and technology, but also this is going to be very valuable in the GATE exam, in the ICL exam as well. Uh, because there are many concepts like I cannot tell you the importance I cannot tell you the gravity that this book holds it looks like very compact size but this is a very very content rich book for dairy technology the fifth book on the list and I don't have the physical copy of that book the fifth book on the list is R. Paul Singh's introduction to food engineering now that book is very good if you are trying to understand the basics of food engineering and uh, Although if you cannot purchase that book for some reason, because I think this is, this is a very expensive book, like somewhere around 4,000 or 5,000 rupees. Uh, so if you cannot buy that book, that is completely fine. I do understand. I have been a student. So what you can do, you can head over to rpaulsingh.com. I'm not sure what was the website. I will just mention it down here. So you can go to that website and all the lectures, the video lectures are present on their website. They, have also, they also have some virtual experiments that you can try out. Uh, right from their website and also you can head over to YouTube and search R. Paul Singh and you will get a list or you will uh, get the channel R. Paul Singh and they have a lot of videos probably more than 200 videos I think somewhere maybe I'm not sure so there are so many videos on food engineering and food processing that he has made and I think he's still active on the channel although he's not really replying to our comments but uh, he's constantly putting out the videos still constantly putting out the videos so R. Paul Singh is uh, a professor in University of California Davis UC Davis in USA and uh, he is an expert in the domain of food engineering he has been involved in designing of space foods with NASA as well. So I think you should definitely check out his website and check out the videos. These are very simple to understand videos on food engineering and I'm still referring to uh, these videos and I sometimes send the links of these videos to my students as well in the university. So make sure you check that out as well. The fifth book on the list is, and this is a heavy one, this is Sanjeev Sir's Objective Food Science. Now, uh, this is the 10th edition and I have made a specific video on the 10th edition. I have reviewed this book and I also have talked about how you can use this book because people think that we have to memorize these MCQs but essentially the multiple choice questions present in this book are for practice. These are for practice. This, this is not a textbook, rather this is a practice book. So look at the uh, look at it from that perspective if you are trying to ace any competitive exam from gate cftri icar even bhu so they have the past year paper they have the past year questions i get a lot of messages from students asking about the past year papers of cftr and past year papers of icar and the thing about cftr and icr they do not release their past year papers and that is why it's very challenging to you know just give you uh, the question papers for free and what Sanjeev sir does and I will link the video again please check that out uh, what Sanjeev sir does he collects all the questions they these are memory based questions from the students who have just appeared in the exams and he compiled them into one this into this single book now this is a very oversimplified version of what goes beyond this book I would do recommend to check the video down in the description and I do recommend to purchase this book for once and all so that you can really, you know, ace your exams. Uh, there are specific questions on food microbiology, food engineering, food chemistry, food technology. And there are past year, previous year questions on CFTRI, ICAR and BHU as well. Sanjeev sir has also added the supplement for CFTR entrance exam. And uh, these supplement material includes chemistry, physics, maths, agriculture biology and the three new sections in the 10th edition are horticulture home science and 
advances in food processing. Now again, advances in food processing is important from the point of view of ICAR net exam as well. Another textbook that I want to mention over here is the Eat Right textbook and uh, this is this is the cover page of that book and you can notice that I don't have a physical copy of this book yet because this is available free of cost yes this is available free of cost you can download the ebook I will give the link down in the description now the great thing about this book this is the authors of this book let me tell you who are the authors the authors the ex CEO of FSSI uh, Mr. Pavan Agarwal and Dr. Pulkit Mathur from Delhi University, Lady Raven College. So they are the authors and uh, there are some specific chapters like there is a chapter on setting the context, the section one. Uh, there's, a cha there's a specific section on eating safe. There's a section on eating healthy. There's a section of eating sustainable. And then finally, the fifth section is coordination, partnerships and emerging issues. Now, the great thing about this book and why I really like this book and I'm really kind of proud of this book because uh, there are about 40, 40 to 45 contributors uh, who have penned down the chapters of this book. Apart from Pavan sir and Polkit ma'am, uh, there are many contributors of the chapter. So there are about 21 chapters and many authors. There are many authors specifically from the industry or academia who are experts in their domain. They have written the specific chapters. For example, there's Dr. Ashutosh from Niftim who has written a chapter, Dr. Bani Eri who has written a chapter, uh, Dr. Jagmeet Madan has also written a chapter, Dr. Joshita Lamba from World Bank has written a chapter, uh, Ms. Mansi Trivedi from World Food Program and there are many, many other people uh, Bhaskar sir from FSSAI, there are many consultants and experts from FSSAI as well who have uh, written the chapters, people from UNICEF, people from different colleges across the country, people from ministry, uh, Prabodh sir has also written a chapter. The point that I'm really proud of because I also have written a chapter, I'm not sure if you will be able to see my name over here but yes I was fortunate enough that Pavan sir gave me an opportunity and I haven't written the chapter in its entirety but I have collaborated with Pulkit ma'am and Mansi ma'am uh, to write the chapter in the book. So uh, specifically talking about I wrote the chapter on historical developments and the new development, the recent developments, the advancements in the food industry. So yeah you can definitely check out this book. I will link it. I will a link down in the description you can check this out now this specific textbook was written by keeping in mind the people the food science and technology students this is a very content rich book and i think this is going to be very helpful for the students who are going to prepare for food safety officer exam central food safety officer exam or technical officer exam and even the scientist position the research positions as well because this book uh, not only talks about food science, food technology, but this also talks about the initiatives by FSSI. This also talks about the partnerships, the different partnerships that FSSI has, the different laws and regulations as well. So this is kind of a one-stop solution for all the food science and technology students who are specifically looking to qualify some competitive exams and government exams to be more precise. And why this is a great book? Because each and every chapter has been written by the industry expert or the academy expert and that's a great thing. Now there are many standard textbooks that I have not talked about in this video. For example, I didn't talk about uh, B. Sri Lakshmi's book and why I didn't talk about that because personally I haven't gone through that book uh, at all. Uh, although many students refer to that book and I have heard that's also a good book and I've also intentionally left out many books because I think for a full science and technology student who is just beginning in his or her program or degree, he, he or she has just joined BSc program or just trying to understand, just trying to grab the concepts. I think these books are good to begin with. Let's not overwhelm all the students with hundreds of textbooks. I think you should begin with these five or six textbooks and I think these are good to begin with if you're just trying to get an understanding and I think uh, these are not only good for the beginners but also for intermediate level and even for the advanced levels. I am referring to these books even now and I think these are very good investment if you are trying to upgrade your understanding of food technology. Another important point that I want to add over here is that I would recommend and I would suggest you to purchase these books for once and all. 
uh, rather than trying to find out the PDF of these books, I would recommend what the books that I have mentioned. Please purchase these books. Apart from R. Paul Singh's book, I think that, that is very expensive and uh, you can also find the alternative on his website. Apart from that, I think you should invest in these books. Uh, not only uh, these are going to give you multiple benefits, but also when you, there's a psychological effect when you purchase a thing, right? When you, if, if I give you an apple, okay, if I give you this apple free of cost, you will say, okay, you, you will just consume it and you will be, yeah, it's fine, it's just an apple. But if you had to purchase it from your own money, so you'll be like, okay, I have to consume it now. Uh, there's the same psychology when the price increases. Now, these books are somewhere between 400 to 500 rupees and I think that is, that is a very cheap price because you are going to use it over the course of three years, four years or maybe five years. So that's a very good investment if you look at the time period, that duration. Uh, also, when you invest like 400, 500 rupees and the book is on your shelf, you will have a psychological pressure on your mind that, yeah, I have to extract the value from these books. I have spent some money and I now, now I want to extract the value as much as possible. This is a very interesting thing because whenever I try to uh, get the free PDF, uh, free PDF version of different books, these are just... Uh, resting in my laptop, I am rarely looking at a lot of PDFs, a lot of food science and technology books that are in the form of PDF. Uh, but these are the standard textbooks and I am referring to them every now and then. Uh, so that's why I recommend to purchase them for once and all. This is a very good investment for you. I'll also put a link down in the description so you can click on that link and you will be heading over to Amazon and you can then order these books for yourself. Alright, so this was it for today. Let me know down in the comments if you have any kind of book recommendations, uh, any kind of book that you were studying and you were going through but I have not mentioned in this video. I would like to know what are your recommendations as well because personally, this is this is always a personal recommendation. This is not a golden rule that you have to study these books. This is a recommendation. This is an opinion that I have formed uh, from my four and five years of college and make sure you have hit the subscribe button and the bell icon as well so that you don't miss the new videos when they come out. I will see you next time. This is not a class. What should I say? Is it a review? Review dismissed? <laughs> I'll see you next time.